Okay, we're trying something new today. What is it? You have to guess. Okay. Oh. It's that, see if you spot anything different. Tech news? Let's see. The USB Implementers Forum has yet again angered fans of reasonable naming conventions with the announcement of USB 4 version 2.0. Yeah, now this wouldn't even be that bad in a vacuum. USB 4 V2, you okay. know? Yeah, yeah. I can see that, annoying, but I could get used to it. What the, gen, though? It, there's no gens anymore. The really annoying thing is it represents yet another departure from previous USB naming schemes, which were responsible for monstrosities like USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. Why couldn't they just call this USB 4.1? That would Well, as developer Benson Lung 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 Well, as developer Benson Lung points out, the term version means that this announcement is mainly geared towards developers who know that this is simply the second version of the spec document for USB 4. Instead of seeing USB 4 version 2.0 on a product box, consumers will probably see USB 4 20 gigabits per second or USB 4 80 gigabits per second. Actually acceptable. Which is actually more syllables and is worse. But comprehensible. Come on, Benson. JK, I appreciate the tweets. He tweeted at us. Hi. Good news, if you didn't pick up on it just there, is that version 2.0 could allow your existing USB 4 cables to support 80 gigabits per second, double their current max speed, depending on the cable. Shut the front door. I won't. Maybe this is just a fact of life, you know? Things get faster, and then they make less sense. That's relativity. People slow down. Einstein knew about this. The debate around AI art has been inflamed once more, following the news that a man named Jason Allen won a Colorado State Fair art competition by submitting an AI-generated image. The twist? Jason Allen is an AI. <laughs> Allen actually submitted the image as Jason Allen via Midjourney, the name of the art generator he used, but State Fair judges in Colorado understandably didn't appear to know what that implied. Oh, he's coming from Midjourney. <laughs> And Alan didn't seem to think it was necessary to be more explicit about how the artwork came about since, um. <laughs> since he used a special prompt, which he will be publishing at a later date. That's art, baby. Now, the idea of creating prompts as a specialized skill might seem weird, but already there are marketplaces like PromptBase where such special prompts are being sold by prompt engineers. I'm quitting. <laughs> James and I talked about this for half an hour yesterday on TalkLink, so listen to that if you need some time to process this wild new reality. We're really smart. It's happening. And processor design company Arm has sued one of its biggest licensees, processor design company Qualcomm, over the latter's acquisition of processor design company Nuvia over a year ago. It's a bit of a Cain and Abel situation. They're just attacking, you know, you know about the Bible? <laughs> See, ARM's upset because Nuvia's license to develop chips using ARM technology expired in March and mostly covered the creation of server CPUs. But Qualcomm is making chips for laptops, smartphones, cars, and more, which was covered by Qualcomm's license under which Nuvia should technically now fall. It's a weird case made all the more confusing by the fact that ARM only stands to gain if Qualcomm succeeds in the laptop and server markets where ARM-based tech isn't as strong as x86. It's like shooting yourself in the foot trying to hit a spider, but the spider's trying to steal your shoe. It's trying to, it's trying to get away with it, so you shoot and you know oops! How many speed spiders have? Too many. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by EK Fluid Gaming, provider of custom water-cooled and all-in-one gaming PCs. They're the coolest PCs I've ever met! Right now you can get up to $2,000 off a range of their gaming PCs with deals on everything from your first gaming rig to a fully liquid cooled RTX 3090 powered system. Each computer is built to order with tailored EK water cooling and a three year warranty. For those on a budget, there's available 0% financing options and a variety of builds at different price points. So check them out at the link below. Quick bits weren't always like this. They were different before. Intel has held up their promise to show how competitive their ARC gaming GPUs are against Nvidia's offerings when it comes to ray tracing. Blue Dudes, Tom Peterson and Ryan Shrout posted a new video to the Intel graphics channel today with benchmarks showing the ARC A770 performing about 14% better on average than an RTX 3060 in 1080p gaming with ray tracing enabled. You know, they're really trying, you know? And I honestly feel like bumping that 14% up a few points just for that. Like, good job, guys. Love a positive attitude. Google has expanded user choice billing for the Play Store from the European Economic Area to include now India, Australia, Indonesia, and Japan. What about us? Nope. 
we're not special, where developers will now be able to apply to accept payment methods other than Google Pay. If developers are approved, they'll get a 4% discount on Play Store fees, which could mean devs that already qualify for a lower 15% standard cut could pay as little as 11%. That's, that's not bad. See, corporations can do good things. You just have to continually mount public campaigns and threaten them with lawsuits and federal regulation. That's how it's always been. It's how the cavemen did it. The US government has banned chip makers like Nvidia and AMD from selling their most powerful AI processors to China in order to prevent such chips from being potentially used by the Chinese military. Much better to force them to innovate and possibly create something even more powerful. Only a matter of time. Nvidia will, however, be allowed to continue producing its flagship H100 chips in China, but once a chip is finished, it must be sealed in wax and launched out of a cannon over the sea to land safely in America. We'll be waiting with our mouths open. Ah. Ohio-based company Folio Photonics thinks they have the answer to the problem of long-term data storage. CD freaking ROMs. Okay, they're not CDs, they're called active disks, which can store up to a terabyte for more than a century while being resistant to changes in temperature and humidity and being immune to radiation and electromagnetic pulses. Ooh, I love a good pulse. You would. They're also like five bucks a terabyte, so the cockroaches are gonna go wild for these things. Did you, cause when a nuke happens, and Halo Infinite's developers, 343 Industries, have announced that the game will not support split-screen co-op, a favorite feature seen as a franchise staple among hardcore Halo fans. Boo. Yeah, the, the news comes after company representatives explicitly addressed earlier games' lack of the feature and promised it would return in both 2017 and 2019. And this is only one of the many complaints gamers have about this particular game, and virtually every other game. Don't they have siblings? We are done making this tech lane. Come back on Monday for more tech news and you can let me know if you spotted the new weird thing. It was weird. Run behind me. I thought you were gonna hit me. <laughs>